Annie Savage. Um, do, you, do you want to introduce yourself, Annie, and tell us how and why you got into construction? Right. Um, so, Michaela and I are going to sit here and pretend that we're in the Grove having a drink and just have a chat for the next 30 minutes rather than a keynote. Um, so, I'm, I'm Ronnie Savage and I'm CEO and founder and managing director of Jomas Associates. Um, we are engineering and environmental consultants, so we work in construction, we do all the work in the ground, so ground investigations, um, geotechnical assessments, land contamination assessments. So that's my little plug for Jomas. I um, started off my career with a degree in engineering geology. I feel like, can you hear me okay? Uh, a degree in engineering geology at University of Portsmouth um, about two decades ago. And I started off my career with, uh, in, a, in a small consultancy in East London. And actually, I, I think back to um, the early days of my career when I was, I was handed my white van and a high-vis jacket and, and steel-toe boots. And I was sent out to a construction site two decades ago um, when there weren't many women on site. And turning up on site and, and you know, the guys on site literally stopping to stare because they were so surprised to see a woman on, on site. So that's, that's where my career started. And I worked there for a number of years. And I went on to work, I moved home and I went to work for a civil engineering practice. And it was the best company ever. Uh, the culture was great. The team was great. Um, and I, I worked there for a number of years. And then they sold the company to a larger organization. And I then had to move on to work for a larger organization. I learned very quickly what the differences were with working with a small company and working with, within a larger organization in the construction sector and the things that you have to deal with. So in 2009, I decided to start Jomas Associates and it was very much with a purpose in mind that I wanted to create a company that worked differently in the construction space and in terms of putting people first, but also working differently. So combining the quality that you'd expect from a large organization with putting people first and the sort of personal service that you get from a small company. So that's, that's the story today. And Jomas has been running for the last 13 years. And I have two of my, of my team here with me to just make me slightly more nervous by being in the audience. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and you know what, Ronnie, I think that's a really in, important, um, what you've just said and something that isn't spoken about enough. Tier one contractors, amazing. They can smash it. They've got the funds, they've got the budgets, they've got the money to be able to do this. But when we're getting down to even tier twos and below that SMEs, it's a real struggle or it seems to be a real struggle. Uh, obviously, you've proven not so much when you really put the effort in. But to try and um, really be... Uh, focused on EDIB, I guess, in construction for these smaller companies. So I know this wasn't one of the questions, Rana. <laughs> Typical. We're just rolling with it. <laughs> but what what would you say a key, maybe one or two key tips to for you being so successful with the diver? I know you've got a diverse team. So with you still being an SME, how are you so successful? And what can you tell other people that they can implement tomorrow or maybe a year, <laughs> maybe tomorrow, that they can take on board and try and build a more diverse workforce? I mean, it's not easy. And I can tell you this as an employer, it's not a walk in the park. Because we know that there is a pipeline issue in terms of diversity in the construction space. We know that only 16% of, of, of girls, or of, of the um, students who are studying engineering or construction related degrees at university actually go into the industry. So we do have a shortfall. Uh, but what I do is I am quite intentional about diversity when, when we're recruiting. And I know that you know, there is, a, there is a need to encourage women, there is a need to encourage diversity into our industry. So. You know, we get two CV, we get 100 CVs in for, for a graduate application and they're two women. I will take them both on. That's how it works. Um, and it's as simple as that. If they tick the boxes and they can do the job, I will take both of those women on. And that's how we can get this moving along, because otherwise we'll be having the same conversations in 10 years time. Okay? Uh, and we're fed up with the conversation yeah. now, Ronnie. <laughs> so back to you, though, Ronnie. What has been, I guess, your biggest challenge in the construction industry <laughs> and... But, we, and you know, we want to be positive. We want solutions. I think we, we need to get away from the problems, acknowledge them. But how are we overcoming these? So what has been your biggest problem <laughs> challenge today? And how did you overcome it? How long do we have? <laughs> Ten minutes, really. Oh, so. <laughs> goodness me. Um, I've got challenges as long as I'm only five foot four. And I've got challenges a lot taller than me. Look, I, I mean, I started off 
working on construction sites. For, for, from day one, I was dealing with challenges of being in a space where I was different, where nobody else looked like me. And you had to deal with that. But not only are you dealing with the imposter syndrome and the feeling that you have, but actually it's what people are saying to you about your difference. It's the fact that people are reacting to you for being different in the construction space. So it's constantly having to deal with that every time you walk into a room. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, it's a huge challenge that people don't realize. So, you know, I've got, I've got a family, I run a business, I do lots of different things, as, as you know, Michaela, I sit on, on boards, I advise the UK government, I have three children, my eldest is 19, um, and I, I try to be there for everybody, people who work for me. I try to be there for my children. And it is challenging trying to balance all of those things and work in, a, in the construction industry where every time you walk into the room, people assume that you're somebody else. How do you deal with that? <laughs> like, how, I mean, I, I've experienced it myself, whereas uh, it's never really outright discrimination. It's more this unconscious bias where I'll go onto a construction site, I'll ask a question and they'll answer my colleague because he's male so I've learned to start introducing myself like I know it's really cringe but I'm like I'm the managing director <laughs> <laughs> to, to just like stamp the authority and so I think please talk to me whilst I'm here as well but how do you how do you deal with it I mean it's a mindset for me it's all about my mindset and I always say this there are two parts to our brain there's the negative side and there's the positive side and you can let this side the negative side overcome you or you can let the positive side overcome you and what I focus on is the positive side of my mind and, and building myself up I don't care what you think about me it's what I think about me that matters and so what I've gone out and done is I've got more letters after my name I'm chartered geologist chartered this char got everything done to build myself and ensure that I'm confident enough when I walk into that room so irrespective Irrespective of what you think about me, I don't care. Brilliant. It's great actually. <laughs> to have. And I think, though, that's why generally, it, it, I can only speak as being a woman, but as we get older, you get more confident because you've got that experience behind you. You have the accreditations. In your case, you have all the letters. I do not. <laughs> yeah. You have all the letters and you've got this experience. But what about for, for young women? What can we say to them when they're going to enter this environment? On, and again, this was not a question Ronnie wanted me to ask, <laughs> but still, here we are. Um, and it's not just young women as well. I mean, it does happen with young men. Like, what can we say to younger people entering the construction industry and they're feeling overwhelmed and always discriminated against? What can we say to help them with, with their confidence? So I, 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 I mean, I, I've, I've reflected on this um, because everybody says, oh, you know, women don't have confidence and men have more confidence than women do. Mm. I think what we lack, what a lot of us lack is the courage. And it, it's that courage to put your head up. I mean, I ran <laughs> for a number of years of running my business. You know, I hid behind my name, the Ronnie Savage name, because nobody knew what Ronnie looked like. And, and I, I let them make the, the assumption of what Ronnie looked like because I didn't have the courage to put my face out there. And it was only five, six years ago that I decided I want to be visible. I want to put my face out there. So it's having that courage to step up and step out and let people see that you're different, but that you're fantastic at what you do. And then only then can we make change happen. Because if we hide behind the scenes and we hide behind our own stereotypes, then we will never change mindsets. And I think that's so important. I mean, and thank you for doing that as well, Ronnie, because it is really important. And obviously, they've just had the, the role model shortlist on here. We've got the Women in Construction Awards and panel coming up next. I think it's really important for people to create these role models. But when you're already a role <laughs> model yourself, like don't hide in the shadows. Yeah. We need women like you, strong yeah. and powerful Absolutely. women who are going to step forward and say, you know, the, again, this is not about problems, but this is about look at what I have done. And you can follow in my footsteps by doing x y and z and just setting the trend Absolutely. so it is important and i'm so glad that you did make yourself visible <laughs> because now we're amazing friends as well absolutely which i love <laughs> now, you did touch on um earlier on about how you're doing a million things you're sitting on the boards you're a mother you're running a business um and i don't want to talk about work-life balance because <laughs> it seems everybody talks about it but th this is a lot of plates spinning mm. so how do you I guess, manage your time, manage to do everything efficiently, but manage to do it all so well. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, I and mean, do I, you manage to yeah, do it all well? well? <laughs> we, I mean, we all drop plates at some point, but I think the most important thing, I mean, they ask the question, can you have it all? And I think absolutely we can have it all. I feel like I have it all. However, I couldn't do it on my own. 
And I think the most important thing is that you have a support structure around you. At home, at work, I have an incredible team that work, a company at Jomas, and they make things happen. I have an incredible support structure at home, and that helps me make things happen. So what is work-life balance? Work-life balance for me might be different for you or you, because it's what works for me is what's right for me. And that's, that's work-life balance. And that's how I make it work. I just have a, you delegate when you need to, and you just create that support structure. I mean, I have, um, <laughs> I, I have young children. I mean, sometimes I can make the um, Easter um, carol service, yeah. oh, well, Christmas carol service, and sometimes I can't. And it's accepting that, and it's accepting making decisions in terms of where I need to be now and where I can do without tomorrow. And that's how you balance it, because otherwise you'll be six foot under. Yeah. I think this is really important though because I have a zero balance in my, my life is absolute chaos. I mean, I'm just a chaotic human anyway. So to try and find, oh, every day I'm going to do this and you know, and then I'm going to be with the kids and then I'm going to be at work. It's near impossible, but I think it, more than a balance, it's a priority. Like what is the priority today? Where am I absolutely needed? And will my children go off the rails if I don't go on an Easter egg hunt? No, they won't. Like yeah. I'm it's stopping all the pressure on parents. <laughs> like they'll be fine. Absolutely. I mean, it's priority, prioritizing, but it's also delegating it's delegation I think and that's where a lot that of people team, struggle with. having that team within your business but also within your family life as Absolutely. well like having people at home who are going to support you your friends your network your colleagues whoever that is people who are going to support you live your dream absolutely but you know I was on a, I was on a, a call yesterday and I was speaking to a woman who um has two two young children one's four and and the other one's about eight months old and she had a meet. She had a series of meetings. She had, There's a school strike. My four-year-old can't go to school today. And I've been sitting there thinking, what do I do? And my neighbor said, I'll have her over. And she dilly-dallied over it for hours. She's like, I can't. It's my responsibility to have my child. I'm not handing my child over to my neighbor. But I have all these meetings. And in the end, she gave in and let her neighbor have. And she was going on about it for the first 10 minutes of our Zoom call. And I said, actually... Does this neighbor have a child? Yeah, she's got another four-year-old. Your child isn't even thinking about you at the moment. She's having the time mm. of her life. So switch off. And I think that's the difficult thing. It's, it's being able to sort of delegate, switch off, and then focus on what you've got to do. And just and not feeling guilty. Don't feel like I'm, well, we I'm always feel guilty. <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm really beyond it. And then all the cage where I am, I might drink some wine and cry for a bit. But I really am beyond the guilt now. I understand yeah. that I cannot be a perfect mom, a perfect mm, businesswoman, yeah. a perfect partner. You, you just... And we've got to stop, I think, striving for that. We need to do the best what we can do Absolutely. at the times when we can do it and when it's uh -huh. most essential. And I think that's the only way to, to kind of have a happy life as well as a successful life. Absolutely. But I know I've just gone totally <laughs> off here, so Ronnie's going to kill me after. Um, back to the questions, Ronnie. Why is visibility? So I know we touched on it we earlier, but why, it. Is, why for you personally is it so important? So I, when I, when I started off my career, turning up on site working on projects, going to meetings. There's nobody in the room that looked like me. There were no women in the room. There were no people of color in the room. So you walk in and you think, there is no, you know, there is no seat for me at the table, at the top table, because there was nobody else there who looks anything like me. But I was driven. I mean, I grew up with four brothers. So if you work, if you grew up with four brothers, you know, you know they prepare you for the construction industry. So I, I guess I was, I, I pushed myself to continue to progress, even though nobody looked like me ahead of me. But so now, but it was tough. It was tough. And there were days when, you know, you'd come off site and, you know, you've never heard me say this, but you come off site and you go in your van and you just have a cry because it is quite, it was quite difficult. But it's just carrying on and pushing on and realizing I'm ambitious. This is what I want to achieve. And I'm not going to give up and continuing to push up at that. So for me, it's so important now that because I didn't have anybody to look up to, that I am that person that people can look up to, that I'm visible, that I'm available, irrespective of where I get to, I can pick up the phone and say, how's your day, what's going on? I'm that person that you can see that, that, that enables you. You know, they say you can't be who you can't see. I'm that person that you can see. And that's, that it's so important. I need to encourage everybody, irrespective of where you are in your careers, that you are visible because there is somebody else out there who is a number of steps behind you, who will look up to you and who, you, you, you give that courage to, to be able to step up and step out. And that's, that's for me why I'm, I have to be visible. Honestly, it's, I mean, it's brilliant advice to tell other women as well. Um, 
to go on and do this. I do feel like the last 10 years or so, I know we've got Sandy who's who's going to be speaking after, mm -hmm. who's been in the industry for like 40 years and been very present about being a woman in construction. But I do feel like it's only the last seven to 10 years where more women are actually helping women. I think there was this perception that there's only one seat at the table. And so I don't want to help other women. Whereas now, or maybe the last 10 years or so, women are like, actually, if I, if I get all the women here, <laughs> then there's going to be far more seats. And I think it's really nice to see obviously you you coming out from the shadows <laughs> and, and putting yourself forward but to be able to encourage other women to do that as well and say this is going to take this is not a one woman band it's mm. going to take all the women to be able to say we need we need more than one yeah. seat at the table we do we, we want do them all. But then you've got to <laughs> <laughs> but you need a supporters nice. club as well and that's hopefully that's what that's what we do and if you've got good women around you if you've got good people around you then they support you as well so it, it's as much as you give, you get. And it's realizing that you don't do it because you want anything back. But if you give, you get back as well. So, And at, at the all, all levels as well, you know, you, you know, there might be people who are, are miles ahead of you, but also behind you, uh, perhaps career-wise, but who you can still learn from. Absolutely. You know, the next generation coming through now will have so much valuable knowledge and insight and lived experience that people who have been in the industry for 20 or 40 years can still learn from as Absolutely. well. So it's really important that this works both ways. It does. Reverse mentoring and back on track. <laughs> In your opinion, what can the industry do to tackle the diversity shortfall? This is a big question. Oh, that is a big question. I didn't write that. <laughs> you did write <laughs> to, to tackle the diversity shortfall that it obviously clearly oh, does suffer goodness from. goodness me. Um, just being intentional. Why are we doing this? What's the real reason? Why are we pushing for diversity? And I've sat in panels and I've spoken to lots of organizations. And I'll give you, I'll tell you one story. Um, I spoke to a big construction company. Um, and I don't know if I've told you this, Michaela, but I was speaking to a, a construction company. And at the end of my talk, um, they, they went out to questions. And the guys were asked to type their questions in, but I didn't understand his question. So I said, would you like to switch your mic on and ask the question? And unfortunately, it was no, no longer anonymous. Um, unfortunately for him, it was no longer anonymous. And he came on the screen and said, why are we doing all of this? You know, why do you want us taking, why do you want to take jobs from me and give it to somebody else? And, <laughs> you know, and I was just, it really threw me because that was somebody in a senior leadership team in a big construction company and they just didn't get it. So how can, we, how can we tackle this is we need to educate people first. People really need to understand why we're having these conversations. Because I'm not asking, I don't employ somebody that isn't good at their job. I'm employing people who are good at their job. And if they're not good at their job, they wouldn't be with the company. So we're not asking people to take people on just to tick a box. We're asking people to take people on and be fair in that, in that decision making. So that's the first thing that we need to do is to educate people about the reasons for diversity within our organization. The reason that we need to get this moving, we need to, it needs to be fair opportunities for everybody, irrespective of what you look like. And this is not just down to gender, it's race, it's neurodiversity, it's just really thinking about opening the doors for everybody, because we are all different. I'm different to you, you're different to the next person, and it's, it's making decisions that don't put people in the shoebox. And that's what diversity and inclusion is. And I, I think just we don't, we don't understand it enough. And that's why Sandy's been having this conversation for 40 years. I've been having it for over 20 years. You know, and, and we don't want to be doing this in 20 years time. We really need to understand that opportunities should be for everybody and they should be fair opportunities. I mean, I, I, obviously, I couldn't agree more, Ronnie. Absolutely. <laughs> but you know what's so interesting? It's this thought process of you want my job and completely disregarding the fact that we've got the biggest skills gap shortage <laughs> since World War II. Like, oh, we'll just ignore that because you want my exact job. And so I think it's explaining that we don't want your job. We just want a job within the yeah. industry. And it actually, if you're terrible at your job, then yes, I do want your job <laughs> because you shouldn't be there anyway. But to be so... What concerns me from what you said is to be so forthcoming with this attitude or even this question that he has the confidence in a room of people or whatever mm. on Zoom with all these people to actually say that. <laughs> like, where is this confidence <laughs> coming from that you think it is all right to... Yeah. I mean, great. It's great to have it so then you can educate him and respond yeah. to it. A lot of people are silently thinking this. But, I mean, what, 
what kind of industry or company are we keeping that we think that this is acceptable to have people employed in positions of power who have that thought process? That's why we're not moving forward, because that's what people really think. That, that is what people really think. I mean, I, I, um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I could tell you so many stories. I could sit here for all day, and I, don't, I know we don't have all day. But, you know, I, I, I was at the, um, I, was, I was going to the Lord Mayor's office uh, a couple of months ago, and I, I um, <laughs> was walking around, saw a security guard, and I couldn't find the entrance. So I said to him, how do I get into the Lord Mayor's office? And he looked at me, dressed as I was, and said, catering is round the back. <laughs> catering is round the back. And I was like, what about me makes you assume that it's, I'm, I'm here to, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being, you know, uh, catering, but why, why do you make that assumption that that's what I'm looking for? Yeah, and I mean, it's, that's what people really think. It's the stereotypes in people's minds of what you look like when you're in a position of power. And, and that's what we really need to change. And I don't know how we do this. I d really don't know how we do this, but that's what we need to change. You had told me this story before, Ron. I don't think I <laughs> said a lot more explicit, but I am yeah. conscious that we're <laughs> at the stage. But how do you react? What, what did you do? Oh, yeah, how <laughs> many glasses of wine do we need to tell you the real? <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I um, do you know, every time it happens, it still shocks me. And I know Carol says this, I'm not shocked, but every time, it still shocks me because I just think, actually, sorry, you're not going to get me emotional today, but, oh, <laughs> but you just think you work so hard, so hard. You know, I was, I was Danny's disappeared, but, but Danny's over there. But, but was it October last year? I was named most influential woman in construction by, by the NFB. And I cried my eyes out when they told me this because every time you just think you work so hard and you get an accolade and you think, you know, you feel, because you know all the challenges that you have to deal with. And every time it happens, I still have the shock. I still do, because I just think, I've, you've, we've worked hard. We've been doing this for ages. Why are you still making assumptions? Why is this still happening? So actually what happens to me, and I will learn, I'm still learning, I'm still on that journey. What happens to me a lot of the time is I don't process it immediately. I take it and I walk away. And then I process it and I think, and I know you don't. <laughs> the game is like, <laughs> but, I know honey, you you're don't. so eloquent and I am very reactive. I would I know not you walk don't. away. I know you don't. But I, I, I walk away, but then I, 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 I react in different ways. So I, I'm vocal about it. I raise it on LinkedIn. I'll do different things. But I am learning. I am on that journey. And I do encourage people to speak up and speak, speak out when these things happen. Because what we don't want is that people continue to have stereotypes in their minds. But the, way, the only way that we can really make change happen Happen, is that we you have me you have carol you have more women sitting on stages like this so that when people walk away they realize when you walk away now from this room you realize that the owner of an engineering company in construction can be a black woman you know that and that changes your mindset i may be the first but i will not be the last so it's changing that mindset of people that's why I do what I do. That's why I do the visible stuff that I do. But yes, I still suffer from shock and I still cry on occasion. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it, we're moving forward slowly and, you know, and surely. Ronnie, it's just so positive. You are so inspiring. And, you know, saying you may be the first, but you, you definitely won't be the last. I think um, I have got one final question for you, but I think that is something that everybody should take from this as well. And just that, yes, you are a black woman with an yeah. engineering firm. So hopefully <laughs> we can, it, it's the unconscious bias, you know, let's, let's try and discuss this talk about it and have the visibility that is so important so that it starts challenging some of these unconscious biases so that the next black woman who's got her own engineering company might not be sent to a case for his entrance absolutely <laughs> but on the final the final question Ronnie. so sure. if you had some advice for your younger self oh, yeah what would it be i'll go back to the point i made before it's courage it's hard work it is hard work I mean, success means different things to different people. And, you know, I'm still working on success. But I think it, it is, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of resilience, and a lot of pushing through those barriers and not giving up. So what I'm constantly doing, every hurdle I'm working, my mindset is very much, what's the solution? 
what's the solution? Don't, don't come to me with problems. How do we resolve this? So it's working on that mindset. And this is what I say to those that I mentor. This is what I say to my younger self is, is work on that positive mindset, that solution finding mindset. And please have the courage to step up, to stand out. It's okay to stand out. It's fine. It's okay, but stand tall and stand proud. And then people will take you for what you really are. So that's my advice to my younger self. And what Ronnie really is, is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Pleasure. You've been amazing. And you. <laughs>